said it was an exercise, but I didn't put it as an exercise here, but still it's a good exercise to think of a couple of systems like this, where here you have a periodic point, but H, the pre-image of this periodic point, does not contain any periodic point, okay? Also, you can think of a dense orbit such that the pre-image does not contain any dense orbit for the system above. So that is why we call it a factor. It's this, this dynamics is contained into this dynamics. Okay, so we are going to see we have all also defined the shift map. And we are going to see that this map is a factor of this map. Okay? This is a summary of what we are going to do today. Well, we have to work in order to prove that. So let's let me remind you what the code was. We have the 2x mod 1 map, and we have any point like the red dot there. And if it is in the left interval, we are going to put the code 0 for it. And we iterate this point, and we see again in which interval it is. It is again in the left interval, so we are going to put zero and do it again, again zero, again zero, again, oops, now it's in the right side. So we put a one, a one, zero, zero, one, and now we can see that this is periodic, so the code will be eventually periodic too in this case. Okay. This coding is not unique, as we have seen. We have problems when the point is here, or here, or here, which is the same point. We have two symbols. We can choose two symbols, zero or one. And there will be two sequences, two possible sequences that define the same point. Okay, we are going to see now, on the other hand, how we obtain a unique point from a sequence. But well, here in the slides, it appears what I have just told you, so be patient. Uh, we have this, and we are going to say that H is a semiconjugacy. If it is, it makes this diagram commute, like we have already seen. And I have not told it in the slides, but we have to require that H be continuous and surjective, okay? And I prefer the notation that F is a factor of G because we, it is more clear which is subordinate to which. Okay, so F is a factor of G, that, that is the diagram, and we are going to see that the, let's call it E2, because we are going to do it later for any expanding map, so let's call it E2. We are going to see that E2 is a factor of the shift map. This is what we are going to do today. Okay, that is, well, so we have to look for an H. An H that will go on sigma 2 to S1, okay, and makes this diagram commute. So today we are going to work in producing a continuous map from E2. We are not going only to do that. We are going to do it for any expanding map. But first let me do it, first let me do it for E2 because E2 is linear and everything is simple and nice, and later we will see for any expanding map of degree two, 
That means any expanding map with two branches, okay? But first, let me do it in, in the simplest case. Where we are not working out the details, the details are, you will work out the details in the exercise session, okay? So, I have already told you how we code this, but now let's, let's see the contrary. Let's assume we have a sequence and let's, let's choose a point, okay? In the first slides we had a point and we built up a sequence. Now let's assume that we have a sequence and we want to produce a point. So this x, x bar is a sequence and the, the sequence will appear in a minute, but we are going to produce a point. So let's suppose that the sequence begins with a zero. So this image where we we need to define h, so we have this, we have this, and we need we need to produce a point. So we have a sequence and we need a point in the circle. How do we produ produce a point? Okay, let's suppose that the first element of the sequence is a zero. So h of x, we are going to define it to be in delta zero, the left interval. Okay, so we have all, all these options for h zero, for h x. Now, let's suppose that the second is again zero. And we want this, we want that E2 of H of X be again in delta zero, so it will be in the left interval of the left interval. Now, the third is again a zero. So it will be in the left interval of the left interval again. Now E3 is again in delta zero. So in order to do that, we need that four iterates are in delta zero. So it, it will be in the left interval of the left interval. Now we have E4 is in delta 1. Sorry, I have. Now this means it is in the right interval of this left interval. So the point will be here, okay? So in each iterate, this is what we want to happen, okay? We want, why, we will tell in a minute why we want this, why we want this, because we want that, we want that this be a semi-conjugacy, so we want that H composed with sigma be E2 composed with H. 
So we want that H composed with sigma be E2 composed with H. But if this happens, uh, you will have that if we have H composed with sigma square, it's going to be H composed with sigma composed with sigma, which is going to be E2 composed with H composed with sigma, which is going to be E2 square composed with H. If you do it, you can do it n times, and you will get that this happens. I'm sorry. So we want this to happen, OK? So that, that is why we want, we want E8, E4 composed with H the H of sigma 4 of X, OK? But sigma 4 is sigma 4 of H, OK? You understand what I'm doing? So I, I will go, I, depending on which digit appears here is where I will place my H of X. Okay, and I will do it one step at a time. But I had the advantage that since this map is expanding, each time I do this procedure, the interval of options is reduced by one half. Okay, so in each step, I have less and less possibilities. And in the limit, I will have just one point. This is the intuitive idea. We will work it out. You will work it out. But this is the idea of how we will get a point. OK? Here I have more and more steps. And in each step, you will be getting a smaller and smaller interval. OK? Is more or less clear how this is done? Okay. Well, this is periodic, so we will have in the limit a unique point. So, how are we going to define this H? Okay, this H of X is going to be precisely the limit of all this. So, H of X will be such that E, uh, sorry, yes, E N of H of X will belong this, where X okay, so to for each digit. We want this. So we want this to happen for all n greater or equal than 0. So this implies that h of x will belong to e to the minus 1, 2, and so this implies that h of x This is how we want to define this, but we have to prove that this is non-empty and that this is only a point, OK? If this is non-empty and it is only a point, then we can define this like this. And this is part of what you are going to prove today. 
but let me give you hints about this. Let me give you some hints. Why this is exists and why it is not empty and why it is a unique point. Well, from, from the picture here, it was more or less clear what happened, okay? But we have to prove it. And in the linear case, it's not that difficult. In, in the expanding map case, we are, we are going to do it. Um, so, first thing is you have to prove that this consists of 2 to the n inter intervals of length 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. And this can be done by induction, okay? It is clear for the first step, and then you assume that it holds for one step and it, you prove it for the next one. And other way of doing directly without, without passing through this is proving inductively that this intersection consists of only one interval of length 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. You can prove directly the second step if you like, okay? For each fixed step, This is an interval of length 1 or 2 to the n plus 1. Here, here you have it. Okay. In any case, if you finish doing all this, you get that h is a well-defined function. So we only have that f h is a well-defined function and it is an exercise, but it is pretty easy to prove that because of its form, E2 composed with H equals H composed with sigma. It is, this follows more or less easily from the definition, okay? Because you apply E, you apply E and you, you are considering the sequence from there on, okay? And so this implies this. Or if you like, if you apply sigma here, you are just considering this. Okay? And this is just, you renumber this, and it's e to the minus n with one less n. So by the definition, because of the definition, it's, from the definition, sorry, it's easy to prove this. It's just working out the symbols. So we are going to prove that it is continuous for a general expanding map in some minutes. But I would like to give you as an exercise to do it for the precise example of 2x mod 1, that h is continuous. and. It's a good exercise just to have in mind. You have to use the topology we have defined for this. We have to use this metric. The metric, remember the metric we used here? We have defined that two points were 1 over 3 to the n plus 1 close, if and only if their first N plus one entries were equal. Okay. So if if two points are close enough, their first n entries are close enough. So then this is going to be the same 
for n steps. So they will belong to the same interval of length 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. So their images will be close enough. Will be 1 over 2 to the n. Okay? So work it out. I am just giving hints. And it is surjective. I want to think, uh, I want you to think about this. I will not tell you why. But it has to do with what we spoke about coding. It will be surjective, but in general, it will be non injective. This I have already told you hints. It is non injective because we have, for instance, this case that has two, two symbols. One is um, 0, 1, no, yes, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and the other is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. No, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, 1, 1, 1. Let me say. Here it is um, 0, and then 1, 1, 1, 1. Yes, and the other is one. Yes, one zero 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 zero. What's wrong with it? If you put zero here and then all ones, then you get this point. Okay? If you put one first and then all zeros, then you get this point. Again. Okay. So let me tell you what we are going to do in in the next class. Uh, not erase this. What's the idea? The idea of this is that we are going to take any f now from S1 to S1, expanding and of degree two. Okay, and with two branches. And we are going to prove, well, if, if you do all the exercises, you have got already that this is a continuous surjective map, and this is a factor of this. Okay, but we are going to prove that the same, the same construction applies and in general, for this case, for any expanding map of degree two, we will have uh, that there is a there is a continuous objective map from the shift map onto the expanding map. It, it will be the same construction. And I don't know, you, this is hard to visualize because it's an abstract space, a totally disconnected space. I, space. I see it in my mind as a counter space, okay? Uh, so that the, the two, these two will go to the same point when this is separated into two. And the irrational points correspond to points that are inside the intervals of the counter set. But that is how I picture it myself in my mind. You, you may choose any picture you like, okay? And 
we are going to see that for any expanding map, we have the same, the same semiconjugacy, not the same, but a similar semiconjugacy. And then we are going to use these semiconjugacies to prove that every couple of expanding maps of degree two are conjugated. In particular, every expanding map will be conjugated, of degree two, will be conjugated to this one. This is very um, non-frequent in dynamics that you have such a beautiful classification and you have a very beautiful model for all a family. In general, you will get approximations of this. It's very, this happens in very particular cases, okay? So the next thing we are going to do is to repeat the procedure we have done for the 2x but one map to any expanding map of degree two. And then in the next class, we are going to use these two, these maps, to construct a conjugacy, okay? So we are going to take this. Um, first thing is to remember that if we have a degree two expanding map, there's a unique fixed point. You remember why this was? Why if we have an expanding, why if we have a degree two map expanding, we have a unique fixed point? Yes? Yes, because we have done it in the first class. We have proven that P and F was equal to this, okay? The number of fixed points to, for F to the N. And so in particular, the number of fixed points is degree of F minus one, which is two minus one, which is one. So for any degree two map, there's a unique fixed point. A unique fixed point. So now we don't have this beautiful model anymore. We are going to have Well, let's put P here. P, and since we are in the circle, this will be P2, okay? Um, so now we are going to take another point, which we, we want some other point playing the role of the one half, okay? We want another point playing the role of the one half. And this point will be the pre-image of Q that is of P that is not P. Let, let us draw it here. It's, it's not going to be in the middle. Why there is a unique Q such that F of Q equals P and why is it a two to one map? Yes. When when we lift when we lift this this to R. Yes. That's two. Yes, that, that's it. It's because the difference between f of x plus one and f of x is two. So we will have fx here, fx plus one here. And in particular, this will hold for p, which is p. Well, we can choose it to be p. And so here, if this, we choose it to be p, 
this is going to be p plus 2. And in the middle, we will have exactly one that will be, since the derivative f prime is also greater than one, okay? So it is monotone, f is monotone, okay? And so there will be a unique point here that will be f of p plus somebody, plus one, okay? And this point is going to be called Q. F of Q, sorry, here. There will be a unique point such that F of Q, of Q is F of P plus one. Thank you. So there will be a unique point here. It doesn't have to be in, a, in the middle, but there will be a unique point such that F of Q is F of P plus one, so both will project onto P. And this will play the role of one half in our 2x mod 1 map. So we will have here something like this, and here something like this. And we are going to call this delta 0 and this delta 1. Okay? Okay, so we will have the theorem we, I have already announced for any expanding map of degree two, we have that F is a factor of the shift, okay? And the fact I, in, this, in the theorem, I already state how we are going to construct this H. We are going to call it H of F, H sub F, in order to distinguish it from the H for the doubling map. So we are going to take any expanding map and so we will want H sub F um, and of course we will want that this happens H com HF composed with sigma equals F composed with HF. Well, in particular, I mean, this is formula is something natural because we are going, we want, in particular, this will happen. Okay, so if we have some h of x, h of x will belong to some point. We will want it to, the, to belong to delta x f0. So h of sigma x, we want this to be f of h x. So we want this. And but this is, this, if we define this to be like this, this will belong to delta x1, okay? We want this to happen. We, we want, we want, this is the, how we are going to define. We want that h of x belongs to delta x0. So the, the, the dynamics and the fact that we want this to be a semiconjugacy will give us where they belong when we iterate, okay? So this will belong H of sigma X and in general, if we put an N here, we will have this and we will have this. Okay, this is what we want to happen. We want to happen this because we want, this will be the rule to construct, this will be the rule to construct. These two rules, we are going to use only two rules, this and this. With these two rules, 
the construction is really natural. So this is, and we, we don't have to think a lot to, to see how we construct the map. The map is already constructed. It's already restricted but by our desires. What we want this map to do already defines the map. Okay, we, we want, we want that Fn of H of X belongs to delta Xn for all N. So this implies that H of X will have to belong to F to the minus one delta Xn for all N greater or equal than zero. And this happens if and only if this belongs so in order to be all we have to do is to show that this is non empty this is unique this map is continuous This is surjective. And this is it. We don't have to prove any, anything else. So I will spoil a little bit your exercises because I have to do it in general, but I would like to, you to do it in, in your exercise class. Uh, so how do we do to prove that this is well defined? Well, first let me, I, I, will give you, I will give it as an exercise, but I will give you hints at the end of the class. So in order to prove that this is well defined, we have to prove that for all n, This non-empty non and is an interval. It's a closed interval. But we have to prove that if the, the length of this interval goes to zero, or another way to prove it is that to prove that if two points belong to this intersection, then they must be equal, okay? So let's, let's prove that. So this is going to be proven by induction. It's going to be a guided exercise for this afternoon. And let's prove that this, there's a unique point in this intersection. So let's Let's suppose that we have two points, two points here. So this will imply that Fn But this, this length, the length of delta xn, it's bounded. They are less than one, okay? They are two halves. They, they are bounded, okay? So let me, we have not proven this yet. So. This F is expanding, 
okay? Let me, where can I erase here? F is, is, is expanding on a compact set. So in particular, the derivative of x, of f exists for every point, but it is bounded by a constant which is greater than one. It's bounded from below by a constant which is greater than one. This is because S1 is a compact set and F prime is continuous, okay? So this is F of Fn minus one And what happens with this? What happens in general when we have a derivable map? This is equal to what? This is F prime. At some point, well, let's put z times the length of x, x minus y. And I must say that this is greater than one, but this is smaller than one, but it's greater than some gamma positive, okay? And so here, we will have that this, this will be equal to the derivative in some intermediate point, but the derivative is bounded from below by lambda, okay? So this is going to be greater or equal than F This, this is x, this is y. So in, in our example, we will have this is greater or equal than lambda x minus y. Okay? I don't know what to erase. So we have that depth. Can you see why we are going to have equali uh, equality now? because we have that this in one step, this is but these are again in the same, these two are again in the same delta xn minus one, okay? Can you see that? So we apply the same procedure and we will get that this is greater or equal than lambda two And we do it n times, and we will get that this is greater or equal than lambda n. Okay? But then we will have then we will have that these two points will be less or equal. which is, le this is less over, this is over lambda n, and this is less or equal than the length of delta xn, which is less or equal than one. But this will happen for all n greater or equal than zero. Okay? So, these are equal. So the only thing we have used is that they are expanding. Oh, I'm, I have to finish. Okay. H is continuous, H is surjective. We'll follow in the same way as the 
2x map, uh, mod 1 map, so I will not do it, or maybe we can do it tomorrow. And so let me give you some hints to prove <coughs> to prove that this is an interval. So define this, define this, and prove by induction that this is an interval. I will give you hints to do that. For the first step, it is obvious that this is an interval because delta x0 is an interval by definition. And so we want to prove that each time we have an interval, we do this intersected with f minus n of this and we get another interval, okay? So, by induction we have to prove that f to the n of each of the extremes go to p f to the n plus 1 of each of the extremes go to p. For the first, it's obvious because we chose it to be like that. We have this and we have this f of q goes to p. So, you have to prove that f n plus 1 is injective in the inside. So, the extremes are going to go to p, but in the inside, it's going to be injective. And let me give you some hint, some extra hint for the exercise of today. Once it is injective, you will have one, one point inside that goes to P, that goes to Q. Because the, the two extremes go to P, you will have one that goes to Q. And then you produce the next, the next delta x n zero x n plus one. Okay, we we discussed this today in the afternoon, but today we have finished with this. Thank you.